Hey, welcome back to our channel. My name is David. In this episode, we are going to talk about safety. RV safety, personal safety, things that you need to keep in your truck and in the RV to keep you safe on the road while you're traveling. So hang with us and we'll go through those topics right away. Hey, welcome back to RV Wagon Tales. If you just found our channel, or if you are a returning viewer, please uh, like this channel and subscribe to this channel. It helps get our numbers up, do the YouTube thing, and uh, so we gotta keep us going. So today we're gonna talk about RV safety, and the first thing we're gonna talk about is personal safety. And what I mean by personal safety is things like this you know if you are stranded on the side of the road or if you have a flat tire or something where you have to get out, uh, out out of your vehicle and you need to do something you need to consider putting on you know this is actually just my old hunting vest but you know it catches the eye so if i am getting out i can easily just put this on boom and uh you know it's visible very bright Hunter's Orange, I think it's called. So this does not have reflective material on it. The, I have another one that does. I just don't have it on me at the moment. <laughs> it's actually stowed away, but I think you get the idea. Also, you'll want to consider uh, triangles, uh, not flares any longer. I wouldn't want to light up a flare on the side of the road. But these little triangles, they come in a kit, and you just simply open them up, snap them together, turn the leg, and you can lock these, and the kit comes with three. You can put these out on the highway to let people know that there's an issue, and of course these are reflective. So, you know, good thing to have. So this would be good to keep in the bed of your truck or behind your seat. Should you need it, you can get to it along with this. I keep this in the rear door of my truck. I keep these in the bed of the truck in a carry case. So now let's talk about tire safety. I think the number one thing to know is tire safety. Your RV is riding on four tires, most likely, maybe two or four or six if you have one of the bigger uh, toy haulers. But you're going to want to know what your tire pressure should be. Code, meaning what is the air pressure in the tire in the mornings, for example. And you need to know your operating ranges. I think the method, now you'll need to check with your tires uh, what brand and what their, their ratings are. But for example, if you have an 80 PSI rated tire, you, you can go up so much in air pressure, say 20, I think 20, 20 to 25%. And then there's a low value. And I think the that is 10%. So for me, I know that 80 PSI is my load range for air pressures and I don't want to go up so, too much and I don't want to go down too much. So we use the TST uh, 507 uh, tire pressure system, monitoring system. And right now the sensors are mounted on the RV. So now you can see I'm getting my tire pressures on, on, the, on the wheels, on the tires, and my tire temperatures. Now one side's a little warmer because the sun's hitting that side but that's current uh, pressures and tire temperatures. It comes with this mount, and you can put this mount, of course it's upside down right now, but you can put this mount on your windshield or on the dashboard. If you have a nice flat area on your dashboard, it does come with this little uh, rubbery holder that you can set somewhere. Mine kind of slides all over the place, so I, I really don't use it, but you could if you needed to. Okay, so now we are going to install the tire pressure sensors onto the tire. So simple to do, just take your stem cap off there, then you put on your locking uh, nut, goes on first, then you take your tire pressure sensor. Uh, odd numbers for me, I have mine set for odd numbers on the driver's side and even numbers for the passenger side. You screw that on, get it on there tight, but don't over tighten it. And then it comes included, mine came with two of these wrenches and you just lock that in place like this to get that in place. Now that's secured. I guess it's to keep the honest people honest. So now that we've addressed 
what your tire temperatures and tire pressure should be prior to leaving. Make sure your temperatures at cold are at their proper setting. So let's, we'll just assume 80 PSI. So to do that, you'll want to air up your tires using something like this, a Viair air compressor. And I'm sure there's other brands out there. This is the one I happen to choose. It's pretty beefy. I mean, this thing's pretty heavy and you know, it's good up to 150 PSI. So my tires are 80, <laughs> so it should be good. My truck tires are 80 as well. So it should be good to go. It comes with a nice long hose, fairly accurate gauge. I'm not really happy. This gauge shows a lot different than what my uh, tire pressure gauge itself and what the TST says. So this is about five to 10 pounds less than what those two read. So I just air up uh, what I think I need and check with the tire pressure, the tire pressure gauge and with what the TST says. I also carry in this pack a tire repair kit because I carry two spares in the event that I were to run over something, a board full of nails and I blow out two tires. And let's say the tires did not shred or anything, they just need to be plugged. I do carry this so that I can just patch my tire or change my tires with my spares and then repair those uh, when I have a chance with this and then air them back up. So at least I would have two more spares if they're just hole punctures and they didn't shred. So, so to power this, you can clamp these to your truck battery if you want. I picked this up at Harbor Freight, I don't know, 80, 90 bucks I think it was. And this has been great. Uh, you can just unclamp these, these leads and I just clamp them on to, just clamp them on, just use as an example, boom and boom. Turn this thing on, 12 volts. I can turn on the compressor and air up my tires. I have used this thing for many things, just for 12, you know, for 12 volt power. Also, this one uh, comes with 12 volt uh, cigarette lighters. And for you youngins out there, we used to have these in cars. Uh, so <laughs> I don't know if they have these in cars anymore or they don't call them cigarette lighters. It also has a USB plug. You could, I guess you could charge your phone. And it also has a little light here, a little work light. So if you're out in the middle of the night, you have your safety vest on and you have your triangles out and need a little light, you can uh, have one to work with. So the last thing concerning tires, let's talk about using the an impact wrench. Uh, I just got this one from Lowe's. Um, this is a 24 volt, uh, three quarter inch drive, I think it is. And then I just got a set of sockets, which I think I showed in another video when I was doing the wheel torques. And I know this is for my lugs. And if I need to remove a tire, I'm not out there with a four way, uh, uh, you know, maybe in the dark or on the dangerous, on the driver's side of the rig where I'm exposed possibly to traffic. I can use this and get my lugs off and uh, get the, the wheel off the, the RV and change the tire out. Okay, let's talk about monitoring. So I use the Halo View backup monitor and of course it has this screen and it also has a camera which is mounted on the back of the RV. And I chose Halo View uh, because it has a much bigger screen than the Furion did at the time. It can be divided up into several panels where you can see behind you to each on each side of the rig and I think you can see forward. So you get like a multi-panel view of, the, um, of your surroundings. So this has been great. It, it shows you what's behind uh, and when you're backing in you can tell exactly where you are. And there are some guidelines and I'll show you that in a, in a moment where you can tell how far away you are from an object. So what I've done is in my own uh, driveway, I would back up so far and I would know exactly where the green line touches this object and then the red line is the red line. So I know I can't get any closer than where the red line is. So the monitor came with a mount that uses like an adhesive 3M pad that you stick onto your dashboard or on something. I didn't really want to do that because it looked it looked permanent <laughs> to me. <laughs> I did not want to do that. So I just bought these little 
tie wraps. They're like these little wiry, spongy looking rubbery tie wraps. And what I do, I just take this and I mount it up on my rear view mirror, since you can't use it anyway, at least for a fifth wheel, you can't see out the rear view mirror. And I just wrap this up around the mirror and just kind of twist it on. And it holds pretty well. Then I can adjust my antenna as needed. And then continuing on with monitoring, I bought this little Bluetooth adapter from, on, on, of course, from Amazon. And I downloaded an app called Torque. And what Torque does is it allows you to check your, your DPF, your turbo, your load, your engine load, many things. You can, you can monitor many, many things. And the ones I am concerned about, of course, are DPF and the turbo temps. Uh, in engine load. I watch, I watch all those as I'm driving and I'll demonstrate that shortly what that looks like on screen. So uh, this is pretty cheap. I don't know, 10, 15 bucks maybe. And the app, which I believe right now is only available on Android, uh, is, I don't know, 10 bucks as well. It's, it's not expensive. And you can monitor many things and it has multiple screens to it where you can, you can set up your own screens. You can adjust the size of the displays right now it's of course it's not connected but you can adjust these and you can have multiple views multiple panels even though i wouldn't call this a safety issue uh it kind of is in a way i think uh this is a falsmon i think that's how you pronounce it water detector and it has these two little le these two little tabs here and if both these tabs get wet basically short circuits and sends off an alarm and these things are pretty darn loud and I keep one of these in the nautil underneath the Nautilus bay where you know the valves are for switching. I also keep one under the kitchen sink and one under the bathroom sink. The last thing you want is you're stopping at a rest stop, you hit your own restroom, you turn on your water pump, use the restroom, and you forget to turn the pump off. And if for whatever reason your faucet gets turned on while you're driving, that pump's gonna start pumping water. And let's just say you kept the, um, the drain plug in, this could fill up and start spilling out. So we keep one of these, again, under the kitchen sink, bathroom sink, and down by the Nautilus system, just in case we have any water leaks. I tested it and it's pretty darn loud. So uh, I don't know, again, if you could hear it while you're driving, but if you pulled over, if you came to a stop, I think you would hear it screaming. So since our channel is called RV Wagon Tales, and that's kind of a little play on the word wagon trails, but we got dogs, then we want to keep those tails a wagon. Uh, we want to make sure that when we are away from the RV for any length of time that we can keep an eye on them. So. I purchased the Blink system from Amazon. I got it on sale. I, I don't recall the cost of it. It's not too much. Um, and you know, for your pups, keep an eye on them. Uh, I got the one with two cameras. So I got one here for the door and I got one for the, keep an eye on the pups. The, um, this is the uh, receiver for the cameras. This connects via Wi-Fi to my Wi-Fi system that I have in the RV. That's a future video. And you can set these things to alert you when you are away. So for example, if you want to know what your temperature is in the RV, if it gets too high, it'll send an alarm. Of course, if it loses power or it loses Wi-Fi, it will notify you as well. So for the safety of the pups, when we're away, we use this blank. And I think lastly, we'll talk about its fire last thing you want to have is a fire of course but if you do uh, you want to make sure you have a good fire extinguisher and you have one that's properly charged you know you need to shake these periodically keep the um, powder powdery doesn't get solidified the ones that come with the RVs are usually those little ones I just don't think that's adequate I keep one of these in our rig in the basement I also keep one of these in the rear seat of the truck. So I have one in the truck that's easily accessible. Just open the rear door, pull it out. And again, one in the bay, in the, in the garage area of the RV. But now when we travel, I keep our bays locked. So I don't wanna have to start fumbling around to get a key. That's why I keep a second one in the truck. 
So I hope this video has been helpful for you. If so, please consider subscribing, share it with your friends. If you think I've missed something or I made an incorrect statement, please comment down below, uh, let us know. We do wanna hear back from you guys. And um, again, share this out with friends and family. And until next time, I'll talk to you soon. Thank you.